coordinated universal time. I am in radio contact. Today in the lab, we are taking a look at the Fumai Duplexer model SGQ450A. Uh, this one was damaged. Uh, I don't know if it was damaged before the guy shipped it or during shipping, but I am repairing this for a friend. Uh, I have replaced the piece of coax that is here uh, because when this was dropped, this bracket got pushed in and it mangled the original coax. Uh, so I had some semi-rigid that I was able to replace this with. Uh, and originally I wasn't going to make a video about this, uh, but when I connected it to the test equipment, I noticed something rather hilarious. So this duplexer came labeled for uh, 462.700 and 467.700. But uh, whoever tuned it last didn't know their way around a notch style duplexer because it was tuned completely wrong. Uh, so this sticker indicates it is the low side and there was a uh, 467.700 megahertz sticker here before, but whoever tuned it tuned that to be the notch. And same on this side. Uh, so excuse the noise. Uh, our piece of test equipment today is the ever trusty Hewlett Packard 8924C CDMA mobile station test set. But it does all the analog testing just fine. Okay, so with the lights off in the lab, we can get a good look at the uh, test equipment. Uh, these Hewlett Packards, because of the way that they write to the screen, it is a real bear to do a uh, do a video capture off of here. So I'm just pointing the camera at the screen, and uh, it looks like it it'll do for today's purposes. Anyways, so I am looking at the high side of the duplexer, which the sticker high indicates that that is high pass. Uh, and also it had the 467.700 megahertz printed label that uh, someone stuck to here. But yeah, they tuned it for notch on 467.700. And you can see our high pass plateau in the upper right of the screen, which is, uh, let me come up a little. So our plateau looks like it'd be centered around 473, 474, something like that. And uh, let me swap ports here so you can see the low labeled sticker. Let me get the dummy load on the high port. Come down 5 megahertz. Okay, so here is our notch on the low, which the notch was 462.700, but because it's low pass, our, our pass plateau is... Uh, lower in frequency so th this has been tuned totally backwards by the last guy that did it okay so we'll go over the basics of duplexer tuning uh, so to do this I use a spectrum analyzer with a tracking generator and there are some purists out there that can actually afford and have a uh, vector network analyzer which would do a better job but uh, this is the equipment that I have on hand and uh, it's uh, done a decent job for me so far. Uh, I do have 3db attenuators in line with the test equipment uh, that is to give more of a resistive load to the IO ports because uh, 
uh, one of these is capacitive coupled and uh, it might not be an exact match to 50 ohms so uh, putting a uh, pad in line is a good way to uh, make a 50 ohm match uh, and then on the duplexer I have uh, one connector coming from antenna one coming from our high or low side and then you want to terminate the opposite port with a 50 ohm load okay so we are going to tune the low side of the duplexer first which is pass 462.65 is the new frequency that the client wants and we are rejecting 467.65 so we're going to center our test equipment to uh, 467.65 okay so that's our new center and what we want to do on a notch style duplexer is move the notch here to the center of the frequency or the center range of the test equipment where our marker is blinking and then the plateau over here will become our pass our low pass of 462.65 so uh, bear with me I'm doing this in the dark so this particular duplexer uses uh, seven millimeter bolts our nuts to tighten the uh, tuning adjustments so I'm just loosening them uh, so usually it's uh, pull there's there's a tuning screw here and you want to come out of the chassis to make the notch frequency go up so I am tuning the first cavity so there we are centered in the notch are centered second cavity then the third cavity so I'm off a bit but uh, that is because the uh, different cavities do interact with each other a little bit uh, right now I have the test gear set to a 20 megahertz span uh, so now that all the notches are close I can go with a 5 megahertz span and tune that tune that a little bit better uh, so one thing to remember when tuning a notch duplexer is uh, you sort of want to stagger your frequencies in the center there you don't want everything coming to a super sharp point so I've made the reference level go down so we can see more down into the noise floor So, not really sure why we're getting that W shape, but that might be because the uh, the opposite side of the duplexer is so far out of whack. Uh, so, I'll go back to a 20 megahertz span, and so that that is what we want our low side to roughly look like so we have our low pass plateau and then we have our high pass notch so let me swap connectors here so I'm swapping the connectors between the low and the high ports of the duplexer
So now we'll dial our center frequency to 462.65, and that is where we want uh, the the low notch with the high pass. Now we we'll open these bolts, our nuts rather. I'm just giving them like an eighth of a turn to loosen them. Uh, and when you go to tighten them, you want to make sure uh, you're looking at the test equipment when you tighten them because tightening them will change the tuning. Uh, okay, so let's see, same thing. Actually, I think we want to go in on this one. Yeah, we're turning the screws inwards to make the notches go down to make the frequency go down to the notch. Uh, so that's the first cavity. Second cavity. And third cavity. So see how all three cavities work together uh, to create the notch in this style of duplexer. And uh, zoom in. Five megahertz span and that's actually looking pretty good. So I've already normalized the generator to take into account the attenuators I have in line, but there we are seeing about 90 to 95 decibels worth of rejection, which uh, that is really good for one of these duplexers, and that's also the port I had repaired. So I hope that helps you out when it comes to trying to tune a duplexer. And as always, thank you for your time and try to enjoy yourselves the rest of the day.